10 tips, my top 10 tips to improve the speed of your Mac, specifically the M1 Mac. So this could be an iMac, it could be a MacBook, could be a Mac Mini, whatever Mac you've got. Now this video does focus on Big Sur specifically, but even if you're running a future version of Mac OS, it'll work fine and most of these tips will be very, very helpful to you. Now before we do get into this video, I will let you know that I've got a full length Mac OS training course available in the description below. I've got a link to it, check it out. I know that you'll find it helpful. So M1 Mac, how to speed it up, Let's look at the first one. All right, so we have logged into our Mac. Now this particular Mac is running, as you can see, Mac OS Big Sur. So the very first thing we're gonna look at is the disk utility. So if you go into your spotlight, this is a little magnifying glass at the very top right hand corner. That's something that you can use to actually open up applications. And we're gonna type in disk utility like that and press enter. First thing is selecting your hard drive. Now this is the hard drive that is built into your Mac itself. Okay, we're gonna select that one. You may have more than one partition as you can see right here. And we're now gonna select first aid over here. So we run a first aid against our disk. First aid will check the volume for errors and then we will run that. That will now complete. You can get a little summary by clicking on show details. You can see exactly what it did. So you can then select done. You can also then go and run first aid again against the other partition or other hard drives that you've got on your Mac. I would run it for every single one going into that, selecting it, and then clicking on first aid. Knowing if your Mac is running healthy is extremely important. You've got a great application built into your Mac called the Activity Monitor. You can open that up again by going to the spotlight area and typing in activity. You'll see it shows up right there. And what this shows you is a summary of all of the processes and services and applications that are running on your Mac. It's categorized by CPU, memory, energy, disk, and network. You can select each of these, and what you can see straight away, you can see what processes are actually taking up the most percentage of CPU. So you can sort it by percentage. If you select the memory, how much memory is being used by that app. So what this is really good for is seeing exactly what applications and what processes may be taking up resources on your Mac. There could be an app on there that is very, very stubborn and chewing up all of your resources. So what you could do is you can identify that. You could then uninstall that app, you could remove it. So if there's an application in there that I don't actually need, I could select that application and then click on the little cross and that will actually force that application to close. So knowing the activity monitor and using it often gives you a good snapshot on the health of your overall Mac. Now we did use Spotlight just before to actually look for applications and look for files and everything. It's a great overall search function on your Mac, but from time to time, Spotlight can run slow. Spotlight is essentially scanning all of your computer to identify where the files are. So from time to time, re-indexing your Spotlight may actually improve the overall performance of your Mac, but overall the performance of your Spotlight. What we will do is open up the system preferences, which I have right down here, or I can go into my Apple logo and select system preferences. I then navigate over to the Spotlight area right there, and this gives you a summary of everything that Spotlight is searching for. So what I want to do is I want to add my entire hard drive into here. From my finder window at the very top, I can select go and then go down to where it says computer. Now this is my hard drive. Select that hard drive and then drag it into my spotlight. Well, I'm gonna say okay. So what that has now done is that has now stopped Spotlight altogether from searching your hard drive and all the contents of your hard drive. Leave that for a few minutes. Once you're done, you select it and we click on the minus that will remove it and then the re-indexing of Spotlight will begin. Now the beauty about a Mac, of course, is that it looks good, it functions really nice, it's got really nice visual effects and it just looks really, really schmick. That can also be a disadvantage because all of these processes, all of these visualizations will actually take some resources from your Mac. So for example, I've got my dock here in the very bottom. When I hover my mouse, you'll see that it does this little effect where it enlarges some of my icons. If I have a window that is open and then I minimize it, you see there's a little effect to actually show me that he's minimizing my actual finder window. All of those effects can be actually reduced or removed so that you get better performance out of your Mac. Open up system preferences and navigate to where it says dock and menu bar. And from within here, you can actually turn off magnification so that now it has no more magnification. You can also look at unticking animate opening applications, minimize window using scale effect instead of genie. So now when I reduce it, it's a little bit quicker. And all of these little things will actually help the actual performance of your Mac. I also recommend keeping your desktop clean. Some people keep their desktop very, very messy. So I recommend that you move 
things that you've got on your desktop to folders, use the stacks option on your Mac and just overall keep your desktop clean. Keep your overall computer clean. If there are files and folders and applications that you don't actually need, remove them. So for example, if I go into my finder and I've got my documents and I've got my desktop and I've got all of these folders and files all scattered throughout my Mac, try to just be good at housekeeping your Mac. Remove apps that are no longer needed. Go into the applications and look through the applications that you've got. If there's some that you don't need, trash them. So try to maintain your Mac's cleanliness. It's generally a good tip. So when your Mac starts up, there are applications that actually start up in the background. Some you may not even be aware of starting up automatically. We're gonna open up our system preferences and we're gonna look for users and groups, select that, and in here you're presented a list of all of the users of your computer. You're gonna select each individual user and then tick on the login items tab. Select that and you're gonna be provided a list of applications, list of files, and it says that these items will open automatically when you log in and actually remove applications, remove files, remove anything that is running in here so that it doesn't start up automatically from your Mac. So for example, if you don't want the time machine to start up automatically, you select the time machine and then you remove it. If you don't want this PDF from starting up automatically, you select it and then click on the minus. Now you can also add items onto here. You can click on the plus and add items that you perhaps do want to start up automatically. But generally the less things you've got in here, the quicker your Mac will start. So now all of those applications, all of those files have now been removed from my login items. So now when my Mac starts up, it's not having to load all of those in the background and then you're gonna get generally better performance now out of your Mac during the boot startup. Now every Mac user uses the internet and they're gonna be using browsers. Now you could have Safari, you could be using Google Chrome, you could be using Firefox. Whatever the browser is, from time to time, you will need to go and clean up these browsers to ensure that they are running at their best performance. Now we're specifically gonna be showing you how to do this on Safari, which is the built-in browser on your Mac, on every Mac. But if you have other browsers, I would also recommend that you go and follow these steps in similar locations. You'll have to do this for these other browsers as well. So we're gonna open up our Safari browser right here. And what you're gonna to need to do is you wanna go into the Safari option on the very top left hand corner and from within here you can click on clear history and clear out all of the history all of the save files that may have accumulated over time on your max browser okay so again similarly on other browsers there'll be a separate section where you can clear the history we're also going to go and select preferences and in the general tab there's a couple things you can do you can remove history items after one year, after one day, after one week, manually. Going into there and maybe saying after one day. So every day, it'll automatically go and clear out your history. The other thing is you've got downloaded locations. So these are files that have been downloaded from the internet. Good practice, remove download list items after one day when Safari quits. So generally, I recommend cleaning this up cleaning out these downloaded list items. So go ahead and select the option that is relevant for you, and then you can keep that clean. Under the privacy area, you can also select manage website data. And in here, there is data that is stored to track your browsing history and your browser. So select those that you don't need and remove them. Remove or remove all. Finally, in the extensions area, these are add-ons that are added into your browser. If these extensions are not needed, select them and then remove them. So most of these options will also be available across your other browsers. So you'll have to go and do that for Chrome and for Firefox if you're using those browsers. Now over time, as you use your Mac, there's this thing in the background that is called cache or cache. Essentially, it's just storing information to allow these files to start up quicker the next time you open them up. It includes things such as preferences for those files and folders and applications as well. So what I recommend is from time to time going and clearing your system and your user caches and caches so that your performance of your Mac is better. Now there's two main areas that we're gonna look at where to delete these. The first is in your finder, making sure that it says finder at the top here. We're gonna select go and then we're gonna select go to folder. Right in here, we're just gonna do a forward slash and then type in library and then select go. Now normally this folder is hidden and is not accessible. So just be very, very careful when you are inside the library folder. Do not play around in areas that you're not familiar with but there is a folder in here called caches or caches. You can open that one up, select all of these 
and then delete them. You'll see that it does ask me for a password. This is your administrator password for your Mac. Some files will be deleted, others may require your Mac to reboot and then it'll delete it upon startup. The other location, we're gonna select go, go to folder again, and there's a little squiggly line next to the number one, it's called the tilde. So you wanna hold the shift and then the button next to the one, to the left of the one, it looks like that. And then you do a forward slash library again. So this is a different location. And in here there is another folder called caches or caches. We wanna open that one up. And very similarly, there's a whole bunch of files and folders in here. We're gonna select all of those and we're gonna actually go and delete all of those as well. I'm gonna trash them and then those are gone. Now I will say that be very weary when you are deleting your cache. It just means that you're gonna lose potentially settings of some applications. You're not gonna lose data, but when you next open up a specific application, you may see that things look slightly different. It's because some of the preferences or the settings may have been removed by deleting these caches and caches. Then the next step may be to create a brand new user profile. If we go back into our system preferences and we select users and groups, you see that my user here is called Oscar. This is my primary user, and this is a user that perhaps I've had for some time. And it's just collected a lot of junk. It's maybe not running as well as it was originally. So what you could do is you could create a brand new user and then manually copy some of the data over from your old user, from Oscar over to the new account. So to create a brand new user, you wanna click on the little padlock on the bottom left-hand corner and throw in your admin password. We then click on the little plus down the very bottom and we're gonna say add new user. In here, we create a user. You give it a relevant name and a relevant password. So that user has now been created. You can select it as a standard user, or you can also tick allow user to administer this computer if you want them to have rights. You can then log out of Oscar and then log back in to test user. And that is a brand new profile. Everything will be completely new. And then you can copy the data from your old profile to your new profile. Now your Mac may still be performing slowly and that's where we now got to look at the actual resources and the hardware on your Mac. Now did you purchase the Mac to do a specific task and you're finding it that it's a little bit slow. So you can see right here that I've got eight gig of memory but perhaps you need to take your Mac to the Apple Store and get it updated to 16 gig of memory. Increasing the amount of memory on your Mac will actually make it run a little bit better. You may look at getting a bigger hard drive if you're running out of space and that could be causing you grief, you could update your SSD hard drive inside of your Mac. Now, the other thing that's important is that you can't change your chip. You can't change that M1 CPU that you got in there and get a better CPU in there. If you've bought your Mac, that is the Mac that you've got. So for example, if you've gone and bought yourself the lower end MacBook and you're trying to do some video editing onto it, then it's not gonna be performing as well as if you had have bought a fully specced iMac or a Mac Pro, for example. So just be aware that some applications will require a lot more resources to be able to perform certain functions. But generally a good recommendation is try to get your Mac specced up with additional RAM and you'll see a bit of a performance improvement. Now, one thing that I would definitely, definitely recommend is getting an application called Clean My Mac. Uh, this is an app that I've used for years and this is an app that has saved me many, many hours of having to do a lot of the stuff manually and it does even more than that to improve the performance of your Mac. Now, I have linked in the show notes below the link to go and download that. So if we just open it up, I'll show you briefly what it does. Essentially, it uh, scans your entire computer and then it'll give you a full report of everything that it's found that can be fixed, that being cleaned, things that can be done to speed up your Mac and things that can be done to free up space on your Mac. Malware removals, privacy, optimize your stuff, uninstall apps properly, there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's an awesome app and I cannot recommend it enough. Now, even though those 10 tips that we talked about are super, super important, and I recommend that you put them into practice, Clean My Mac is an app that I use almost daily just as a good practice to go and scan my computer, clean it up, fix it up, and my Mac is always running at peak performance through this app. So get it, show notes, check it out. Why don't you let me know whether you put some of these into practice. Let me know in the comments whether these worked for you. Let me know in the comments if some of these did not work for you. Let me know in the comments if there's some that I missed perhaps. And also if you did like this video, do give me a thumbs up and like this video as well. And also I wanna grow my channel more, so really would appreciate it if you subscribe, clicking on my face, on the bell, so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And check out some of my other videos over there where we talk about all things tech. Thanks again, we'll talk to you next time.